Good morning, Super Readers! Thank you for joining us in our Valley PBS classroom. I'm Mrs. Nix. I'm Mrs. Hammock. And I'm Mrs. Vang. This is a place for us to learn, practice, and grow, grow our brains. To become even stronger readers, writers, and thinkers. So let's get started by warming up our brains with some ear training called Daily Phonemic Awareness. All right, super readers, today with our Daily Phonemic Awareness, we're going to go through and we're going to do some phoneme addition. Okay, mm. addition. Addition that, in... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to put wow. math and reading together because we're going to add a sound to a word. I love it. So, for example, if I have the word air, air, I want to add a p to the beginning. Now what's my new word? P -p -pair. Pair. Pair. Oh, well, that's tricky. <laughs> All right. Now I did it with two different colors, but you really don't need it. I just kind of did it to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about this one? How about if I start with air? Maybe I'll just leave air be that color. Mm. Mm. Wonder why I'm having that color stand out. Mm. <laughs> All right, if I have air and I want to put ch in front of it, what's my new word? Ch, ch, ch. Air. Air. Chair. Chair. All right. How about this? What if I start with room? Mm. She's throwing Brr. a curveball. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm, how many sounds do we have? Room. Room. And if I want to add b to the beginning. Oh. Broom. Broom. Oh, oh, I see ah, what you did there. See? So all we did was we added a sound. Did a little addition. Awesome. Nicely done. I love it. Good job, super readers. So I say... It's getting to be Thursday. Mm -hmm. Let's warm up those brains. I think so. I mm -hmm. think we could use it. So stand up, get okay. yourself some space, and let's get started. Oh, and I like this one. Me too. our word work today, we're going to use a different spelling pattern for our chair card, mm. one we haven't really practiced very much. So, okay, I think we're ready. that's I'll hard work, but I think they're ready. I okay. think so. That's Thursday. All right, super readers, here we are Thursday, and we are still working on our chair card. Remember that chair card has the air sound, so we are thinking about the, all the different ways that we spell all of the air sounds, right? So we're going to blend some words with our friends and then we'll build some words. And I think you are going to be able to do this really, really well. Okay. Um, did you, I think I hear them, let's call them. Hey friends, are you ready to come and read? Ready. Yes. Oh, fantastic. All right, let's first start by reviewing the spelling patterns for that air sound, okay? Okay. All right, A-I-R says air. A-I-R says air. Good. A-R-E says air. 
A R E says air, and E A R says air. E A R says air. Fantastic. All right. So let's blend some words before we start building, just to kind of get our brains thinking. Let's start with this word here, and we have a consonant blend, the S T, and that blend together says what sounds? St. St. Good. St. St. Air. Air. Stare. Stare. Good Stare. job. All right, let's take a look at this one. Oh, another consonant blend. Mm. Here we have G L. That's kind of tricky to say. Do you remember the sounds that? Now remember, it's two sounds, not just one. They we just put them together really quickly to make that blend. Here we go. Glare. 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 Very good. Do you know what a gl what a glare means? Ooh, I do, I do. It's when something gets really bright and it can cause a glare in my eyes and it, I will get squinty eyes. Right, very good. It see. could also be um, a not very friendly way that somebody looks at you if they glare Ooh. at you. Ooh. That's I mean, what I was thinking. That you, yeah. I was thinking because because when I get mad at oh. my friend and they're trying to talk to me, I just I give, oh, you give them a give glare. Them a glare like, oh my goodness! Like, don't talk to me. Oh my goodness! Well, I hope that you don't feel that way today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this last one here. We have the W. Do you remember the sound W makes? Mm -hmm. What? Is it? Oh, very good. <laughs> what? Air. Where? 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 Very Where? good. And remember, we have talked about that word before. Mm -hmm. It's when you have something on. You yeah, are... like I like to wear a yellow bow in my hair. Yes. But I don't do. have any hair. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, you're so funny. That's so good. All right. So today, I thought, since it's Thursday, we're wrap getting close to the end of the week. I thought I would give you some words that we haven't really spent time spending building. I would like to build the word pear, as in my mom put a pear into my lunchbox. Ooh, that was the fruit. Mm. And remember, I think Mrs. Nix um, had it in her sentence at the beginning of the week because right. Ricky talked about it. Good memory. And, oh, but now I have to remember, was mm -hmm. it E-A-R? Mm. I think it was. So, so, P- Okay. E A R. Let's see. What do you think, Ricky? <laughs> I agree. Very good. This pear is the fruit. Mm -hmm. That's right. Very good. All right. So if I have the word pear and I want to change it to say, hmm, oh, I know, tear. There was a Ooh. tear in my paper. What would I say? How would I do that? How would I change pear to tear? I, I got it. Okay. If, even though I know, Tina, this is I your baby son, I know. But it's a t. 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 All mm -hmm. right. And? Tear. Do I leave this pattern? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, do you see why this might be a tricky word for some mm -hmm. people? Because mm -hmm. this can also say, Tear, but like, right. like I had a tear come down my eye. You're, you're right. Because I was watching a so, movie. What? How would we know how to read this word when we're reading? What would we need to do? Ooh, I know. Ricky talks about it all the time. We need to have context clues, a whole sentence that could tell us what it is that we're trying to read. You are right. Mm -hmm. You have to pay attention to what you're reading by. Mm -hmm. Because reading is supposed to make sense, right? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't make sense, then we need to go back and reread so that we can try a different sound because mm -hmm. it's supposed to make sense. So we have to really be thinking about what the words we're reading says. And if it doesn't make sense, we need to go back and check again. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, one last word. We have tear. What if I wanted to say bear? There was a bear in the woods. Mm. Mm. Any ideas? Uh, we just changed the t, t 
to a B, which is you the B. You are right. I kept the same spelling pattern mm -hmm. so that we could practice words with this spelling. E-A-R says air. And here we have bear. Now, I will tell you this. There are not a lot of words that use this spelling pattern. Mm -hmm. So you can see here I wrote some of them. Where, bear, pear, tear. And there's not a lot more that I could add to that. So that's one thing, one way that we can remember. There aren't as many words to remember what they look like with that spelling pattern. It gets a little trickier with these two spelling patterns. Um, but remember what we said. The most common way to make the air sound is that very first spelling pattern. OK? So we've got to train not only our ears, but we also have to train our eyes so that when we look at something, we, our brain recognizes the pattern and whether or not it's correct, if it looks correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very tricky. Mm -hmm. And you guys have done such a great job this year learning all these amazing spelling patterns. I'm very proud of you. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Well, I think that's all I have for you today. I'm going to read the sentence with our super readers. And I think you guys have another job you have to go do, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we mm -hmm. do. All right. All right. See, See you later. later. Bye, Mrs. Hammond. Bye. All right, super readers. Here is our sentence for today. You can wear the spare pair of mittens. How'd you do? Good. We have wear, spare, and pair. Did you see how I did that? I wanted to use a word from each of those spelling patterns just so we could practice. All right. Great job reading and practicing. Remember, if reading is supposed to make sense. So go back and read carefully if it doesn't make sense. Let's go see Mrs. Nix because she has some high frequency words that are also going to help us make sense of our reading. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mrs. Hammock. And yeah, we're going to go through and look at and review our six words we've been practicing this week. Are you ready, super readers? All right. I think you're getting really good at these. So read them big and loud. Here we go. <clears throat> Favorite, young, surprise, wonder, few, and gone. Now today I have two words for us to practice. So the first one is few. Spell it with me. F-E-W. There are only a few letters in few, right? Excellent. And then our other word here is wonder. Let's spell wonder. W O N D E R. Wonder. Great. Okay. Now, here comes a little bit of a tricky part. I have two sentences. And just like Mrs. Hammock said, and I believe Ricky said, our reading needs to make sense. So help me make sense. Where do I put these words in our sentences? There are only a mm, books on my shelf. Hmm, what would make sense there? There are only a wonder books on my shelf. Hmm, there are only a few books on my shelf. Great job. Okay, let's see if wonder works in this next one. I wonder, can you wonder? Yeah, you can. I wonder what time the plane will land. Hmm, I wonder too. All right, so here comes our next piece. And I'm always looking for fun ways to go through and play a game with a friend and practice. And this is a great one. I'm gonna have Mrs. Bang come out and we're gonna do a little bit of a whack a word. And here's what we're gonna do, Mrs. Bang. So I have a stack of all of our words and we're gonna show them to our readers and then we're going to flick it over so we can see it. We're each going to have a pointer. And the first one to point to the correct high frequency word wins. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. In fact, we almost could have Mrs. Hammett come out. Should we do that? Mm-hmm. Because she can oh, read it. Oh, she could read it to us. And we us. have to find it. Oh, oh look at that. Like we got a third that. one. We're going to squeeze okay. her in. All right. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Okay. All right. All right. 
We're ready. I'm looking for the word favorite. Oh. <laughs> okay. Right. You ready to try another one? Yes. Okay, ready? Young. Oh. Oh. She's feeling frisky today. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Last one. Surprise. Woo, oh. it was a tie. I love awesome when that happens. Job. Awesome job. Thanks, ladies, for coming and helping today. Definitely. And Let's have you guys enjoy a story, and then Mrs. Banks is going to come back and work on you with some comprehension. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see you back here in just a minute. A young nation grows. In 1776, our nation had just 13 colonies. About 2 million people lived here. Each colony later became a state. Look at the map of the colonies. Read the colony names below. Do you see any names you know? Map the 13 original colonies. Map labels. 1. Massachusetts. 2. New Hampshire. 3. New York. 4. Connecticut. 5. Rhode Island. 6. Pennsylvania. 7. New Jersey. 8. Maryland. 9. Delaware 10. Virginia 11. North Carolina 12. South Carolina 13. Georgia Captions 1776 Colonies Philadelphia Today our nation has 50 states. More than 312 million people live here. Did you know that Philadelphia was our nation's first capital? What is our nation's capital today? If you guessed Washington, D.C., you are correct. It became the capital in 1790. Map the United States today. Map labels Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. That was a quick story, right? So when Mrs. Nick said we're going to be back in a minute, we were back in a minute. Now, let's work on some read-read with our comprehension today. So we're going to read this, this page, just the first page, again, and let's see if we can answer some of the questions. So let's have a friend come and help us read, because I know someone who likes to read. <laughs> Are you talking about me? I am, Rita. Can I you help me read. read? Oh, I know you do. Okay, Rita, so here's what we're going to do. Remember, one of the strategies is to look at the question first. Ooh. We're going to read it, and then we're going to go back and read, read the page, because that will tell my brain the answer I'm looking for. Remember Rita, that strategy? Rita. Okay, so the first question says, Circle how many colonies there were in 1776. So that's our first one, okay? okay? So we have to find how many colonies there were. And then we're going to write how many people lived in the colonies. And then we're going to underline the sentence that tells what happened to the colonies. Should we stop at that? I'm going to stop at that. That's three questions that I'm going to try to keep in my brain. Wow, that's a lot. It's a lot, but okay. I think we can do it. Okay, you ready? So. Yep. Okay, I'm going to point you read. Okay. Okay, go. In 1776, our nation had just 13 colonies. About 2 million people lived here. Each colony uh, later became a state. Look at the map of the colonies. Read the colony names below. Do you see any names you know? Good reading. Thank you. Okay. Now, did you guys remember how many colonies were there? Oh, oh, I remember. You did. I heard it. It's in, mm -hmm. It was in the very beginning. It said 13 colonies. That's right. So I'm going to circle it right here. Guess what? There's that word colony right next to it. That was a clue that your answer was nearby. Did you know that? <laughs> that was. Now, how many people lived in the colonies? Do you remember? Yeah, it, it said about two million people lived there. That's, That's a lot. That's right. It's right here. So I'm going to put two million. That's a lot of people. You are right. Okay. Now this um, question says, I'm going to underline the sentence that tells what happened 
to the colonies. What happened to the colonies? Oh, oh, is that, is that when they're talking about they became states? That's right. So there was 13, and we call them a colony. So there was 13 colonies, and then now we call them a state. So now we have 13 states. And so if we look at our map, right, the last question says, which colony is at the top of the map? And then we're going to circle the answer on the map. So can you help me with that? Sure, sure. Okay. So if I look at the map, mm -hmm, it is... has the number one pointing to it. Mm -hmm. So then I could go over to that little graphy thing. What is that? That's called a key. Isn't it's a it? map key. All right. So here's my map, and this is what we call a map key yeah. because this will give us information about the map. Yeah. So if I find number one, it says Mass, Mass, Massachusetts. Oh, I like how you sounded that out because that it was a, that's such, super long, wasn't it? Yeah. I like that you sounded one. it out. You're right. So, what? Which colony was at the top? Massachusetts. That's right. So I'm just going to underline it right here because that was number one. Good job. <laughs> okay, so now that we know that this is a map, and it's the map of the 1776 colonies, and I know this part is what we call our map key. Now my next question to you is, how does the map key help you understand the map? So to do that, I have a Venn diagram here, and we're going to find what is similar about the map and the map key, and what is the difference about the map and the map key. Okay, can you okay. help me with that? So sure. first, let's look at the map. What do we notice about the map? The map only has what? Oh, it, it just shows us the places. That's right. It gives us the places. And the map key... Oh, that tells it has, us the names. It does have the names. And guess what they both have? Do you see what they oh, both have? they do. They both have numbers. That's right. They both have numbers. So, I can use the map key to find... What do you think? Uh, the way the colonies are, what the name of each one of them is what they're called. And that's right, because if you notice, you see how tiny these colonies are? It would have been too hard for us to write all of the colony names on the map, so that's why we have a map key. And so the purpose of the map key was to find where the colony was on the map. I love it. Awesome job. Okay, now we have a little bit of time left to go into our writing, so I'm going to read the writing prompt, and then I'm going to see if our friends at home can help us. Okay. Okay? Okay, Bye. friends, here is our um, writing prompt for today. It says, why do we celebrate holidays? Hmm, I want you to think, why do we celebrate holidays? So this week, we have read a lot of stories that has to do with holidays, remember? We talked about Flag Day and our first story with our flags. We talked about the um, Independence Day with July 4th yesterday. We talked about Harvest and Thanksgiving, right, which is another holiday. So. I started the topic sentence for you, and my topic sentence says, there are many reasons to celebrate holidays. I want you to come up with three details in a concluding sentence for me, and then read your story to your grown-up or to your brother or your sister, all right? Okay, now I have another friend who wants to share one of their books um, that they want us to read, so let's see what book they want to share with us. My name is Ms. Dina. I'm over at Wishon Elementary. This is our library here. I wanted to share a book with you, and it's called Chicken Story Time. It's written by Sandy Asher and realist, uh, illustrated by Mark Fearing. This is such a great and funny story for you guys to read. It's one of my favorites. I just read it to one of my classes. The illustrations are great. You can see pictures of uh, students sitting in their library reading, and you can see a chicken hiding next to the shelf. So this gives you an idea of what this is going to be about. Chicken story time. You can see them there at the public library and you can see the chicken looking up at one of the posters that they have there and it says story time at the library. Tales to tales. Don't forget to read to your dog. This is great if you guys are practicing reading. You can read to your siblings, you can read to your pets, and I'm sure your pets would love it, especially your dogs, because they love that attention. So story time at the library. 
we see a chicken, we see some children, some parents, one librarian, one story, children, and a chicken. And he looks pretty excited to be there. <laughs> the children like the chicken. The chicken likes the children. Let's begin, says the librarian. Everyone loves story time. Check out the chicken sitting there on the carpet. One week later, story time at the library. We see more children and more chickens. As you can guess, story time is very popular and it's growing. One librarian, one story, more children. More chickens. You're gonna notice it's gonna start to get a little chaotic. And if you wanna know the rest of the story, check it out at your public library. Again, it is called Chicken Story Time. Oh, oh my gosh, what story. a cute story. I have not read that one. No, have you guys read that no, one? No, I'm, I'm gonna go read it later today. Mm -hmm. I think that's that a great good. idea. Hey, 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 I got a knock, knock, knock for you. Oh, let's hear it. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Lena. Lena, Lena who? who? Uh, Lena, a little closet. I'm gonna tell you another joke. Oh, <laughs> that, was a little, uh, very that was cute. Good. I did that like that one. one. That was a good one. <laughs> hey, super readers, thanks for joining us today at Valley PBS. We look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.